Hey guys, I'm at Bambi TV. So today we're going to be reacting to the kingdom of Allah. Know your creator. Guys, let's get straight into this. Who is Allah? We want to refresh our Iman. We want to be attached to our Creator. We want to fear nobody but Him. We want to please none other than Him. So who is Allah? Come with me to Surah Al-Hadid, chapter 57 of the Quran, where Allah, He says, introducing Himself to us. Lahu mulku samawati wal ard. He is Allah who has the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Yuhyi wa yumeet, he alone is the one who gives life and death. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer, and he is able to do whatever he wishes. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wal ardi wa huwa al-aziz al-hakeem. Everything in the heavens and the earth glorify Allah and he is the most mighty, the most wise. Ya Allah, hal ta'lamu lahu samiyah? Do you know anybody who shares even one of these characteristics with Allah? Who is Allah? Come with me to chapter 6 of the Quran, Surah Al-An'am. Allah says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ He has the keys to the unseen. No one knows them except Him. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And He knows everything that is on land and everything that is within the sea. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا There isn't a single leaf that falls from any tree except that Allah has knowledge of it. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ And there isn't even a grain within the darknesses of the land. وَلَا رَطُبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ Nor is there anything moist or anything that is solid. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Except that Allah has knowledge of it, it is written within a clear record. La ilaha illallah. We bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the description of just one of Allah Almighty's creation. He is an angel, the chief of the angels, Angel Jibrail alayhi salatu wasalam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw him in his true angelic form. Ahmad narrates in his Musnad that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion, he said. رأى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جبريل في صورته رأى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جبريل على صورته له ستمائة جناح كل جناح منها قد سد الأفق يسقط من جناحه من التهاويل والدر والياقوت ما الله به عليم he says the Prophet ﷺ saw Angel Jibreel in his true angelic form. And he had no less than 600 wings. And every one of those wings was huge enough to fill the horizon and cover the skies. One wing spread out covers every cloud, covers every star, covers the sun and the moon, covers every inch of that blue sky that we see. One wing. What then can you make of 600 wings? And if this is the majesty of just one of Allah Almighty's creation, what then can you make of the beauty and the majesty of the Creator Himself? La ilaha illallah. I bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters, yet a second creation from Allah Almighty. This is the description of one of the angels who are carrying the throne of Allah. Abi Dawood narrates in his Sunan on the authority of Jabir that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, أُذِنَ لِي أَنْ أُحَدِّثَ عَنْ مَلَكٍ مِنْ مَلَائِكَةِ اللَّهِ مِنْ حَمَلَةِ الْعَرْشِ مَا بَيْنَ شَحْمَةِ أُذُنِهِ وَعَاتِقِهِ مَسِيرَةُ سَبْعِمِئَةِ عَامِ He said عليه الصلاة والسلام Allah has given me permission to give you, O Muslims, a description of just one of the angels that are carrying the throne of Allah. He said the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is the distance of 700 years worth of travel. If that is the distance between his ear and his shoulder, a hand span of a distance for us human beings, 
What then about the size of the rest of this angel? What then about the enormity of the rest of his body? If this is the size of one of the angels who are carrying the throne of Allah, what then about the enormity of the throne of Allah itself? And if this is the size of the throne of Allah, what then about the Lord, the Lord and the King of the throne? The name of sin. Today we've forgotten. Today we've forgotten. Today you and I think what? That to see I need a pair of eyes. You're wrong. Because there are millions around the world that have eyes. But they can't see. It is Allah that allows you to see. Today you think to he. I need a pair of ears. You're wrong. Because there are millions around the world that have ears. They're stuck on their heads. But they can't hear my brother. It is Allah that allows you to hear. Today you think to walk. I need a pair of legs. You're wrong. There are millions around the world that have legs. But they can't walk. It is Allah. And Allah alone that allows you to walk. Allah, not you. Allah, not you. Allah doesn't need you, my brother. Allah doesn't need me. Allah doesn't need us. And we have to understand because this is aqidah. You have to know this so that when you worship, you are always humble. When you worship him, you never have pride. When you worship him, you never have arrogance. Because you know, at any given point in time, I am where I am only through his mercy. Only through his rahmah, I am where I am. Not because of your own actions. And to know with depth, with yaqeen, with certainty, that Allah the King of Kings doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need anyone, my brothers. Wallahi, everything you see around you, everything. Today, the Muslims have so much fear in their hearts. Fear. Fear of the kuffar. Fear of the West. Fear of laws. Fear of regulations. Fear of this and fear of that. But to know that Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need. Wallahi, my brothers. Wallahi, I take an oath by Allah. You have to come to terms. You have to come to believe with certainty that every single human being who ever lived, whoever is living and whoever is to come and live on this earth Wallahi, every single human being, every single jinn, every single animal that walks on this earth every single bird that takes the flight in the sky every single fish that swims in the oceans of Allah Azza wa Jal Wallahi, every single land, every single country, Wallahi, with all their governments and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how, all with the exception of none, every country, every tree, every grain of sand, every mountain, every river, every ocean, every ocean, Wallahi, Every star, every sun, every moon, every single planet, every single angel, the billions and billions and billions of angels, all of them, with the exception of none, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, all, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, the ocean above it. The eight that carry the flag of Allah, the hearts of Allah, all are dead. All are dead. Nothing moves, nothing stops, nothing makes, nothing breaks, nothing gives, nothing takes, nothing rises, and nothing falls, nothing harms, and nothing benefits in Allah. And until this, yaqeen and faith. Is in your heart that nothing that everything is dead, everything except Allah. Allah doesn't need anything, anyone, no prophet, no angels, no jinn, no ins. We need him. He's the ever-living. 
So you might say, brother, I'm alive. What's so special about that? I'm living. Yeah, but your living is dependent on his existence. He's the first with no beginning. He's the last with no ending. He's Allah. He is Allah. Al-Malik. He's the king. He's the king. He's the one who on the day of judgment, when everything will come to an end, when Allah Azza wa Jal will order the destruction of every living creature, when Allah Azza wa Jal will, Allah will order the destruction, the death of every human, of every animal, of every jinn, of every angel, until there comes a point where there is absolutely nothing in existence except Allah. And Allah will call out, Aina al Muluk? Aina Abna al Muluk? Where are those kings? Where are those kings who thought they were kings? Where are the sons of those kings? Allah will call out. Where are the tyrants? Where are the gangsters? Where are the boys that thought he was something? Where? Aina Abnaum. Where are their children? Allah will call. Where are they? And then he will ask, Limanu Mulku Liyawm. To who is the kingdom today? Who? Nothing will answer. Allah Himself will answer. Today it's to Allah, the one and only. Allah asks, Alam tara anna Allah yasjudu lahu man fi samawati wa man fi al-ard. Don't you see, O oh people, that everything in the heavens and the earth prostrates to Allah? وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ And so does the sun and so does the moon. وَالنُّجُومُ وَالْجِبَالُ And so do the stars and so do the mountains. وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابُ And so do the trees and so do the moving creatures. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ And so do many people. وَكَثِيرٌ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابِ And many people will be punished, Ya Allah. Isn't that amazing? From all of creation that's in existence, they are all in submission, all in sujood to Allah, whether we see it or realize it or not. And the only exception is a minority who happen to be from the weakest of all creation. He is man. He and the jinn they refer. Guys, the truth is that, <clears throat> like, I would say everything they say is true, and I believe it. I believe everything he says, like, he, he's speaking facts, and this is something that me as a Christian, I believe too. But, like, him saying that God is, like, mighty, he's forever, he's greatest of all, like, he's the king of kings, he knows the beginning from the end. These are things we believe, and I, I, I can say with my full chest that everything he's saying is right. And I feel Islams are one of the people that fear God, like, they're, they're one of the religions that actually show that they fear God. 
like they show it, they prostrate, they pray like five times a day. But I can say most Christians pray way more than five times a day. I personally pray more than five times a day. But like some Christians don't, some do. Like I, I keep on saying there are some real Christians who like we are out to worship God and we do more, you see. But like I enjoy this video. I enjoy the fact that some people are out there worshiping God, showing people that God is mighty. And this video actually makes me get a grasp of where Muslims are coming from. Like it made me understand the religion. And I can tell you there are a lot of Christians that don't understand the religion. Like we just don't know anything about Muslims. Like we we are not taught anything about Muslims. So it's something that you will it's kind of an individual interest that you want to know about the other religion but like based on if we are just going to church i don't think we don't talk about muslim we don't talk about muhammad we don't talk about anything like that we just talk about god and i feel that's what you guys do too you talk about the god and it's just so beautiful me knowing that it, like if we'll be honest but worshiping this in god like what we believe God is, we believe God is that too. So, so worshiping the same God. So I come to the end of the video. Please do like, share, subscribe to my channel. Tell me where you think I went wrong in this video. Tell me things you think I need to know about Muslims. Just leave your comments and I'll read it and I'll reply you. Guys, I'll see you next time, guys. Please make sure you check out for me. They made this possible.